Is God mad at you? Or is he at peace with you? I'm going to show you that even if God is your enemy, he is at peace with you. My goal in this video is for you to no longer fear God, no longer hide from him or avoid him, thinking that he is mad at you and just can't wait to destroy you. I hope you will realize that God was in Christ, making himself to be at peace with you and not reckoning your sins and offenses to you. And he is calling you to be at peace with him. Believe it or not, when Jesus died and was raised from the dead, things happened. Big things. Huge things. Things so big that religions and religious people just cannot wrap their brains around them. According to Orthodox Christianity, the big things that God and Jesus accomplished are just too good to be true. So they reduce God and Jesus amazing accomplishments down so that they can fit them into their tiny little Jesus box. Yeah, it's quite roomy in him, eh? The great news is the true Jesus, the biggest Jesus, has actually accomplished things that are great, good, magnificent, and true. And more great news, Orthodox Christianity can't actually reduce his accomplishments down to fit into their tiny box. They have to find another God and another Jesus that aren't very successful to squeeze into their tiny little theological box. First, let's set a solid foundation and see how the true God treats his enemies. Here is a mashup of Matthew 5, 43 through 46 and Luke 6, 27 through 36. Jesus is correcting some misunderstandings about how we are to treat our enemies. He says, you hear that it was declared, you shall be loving your associate and you shall be hating your enemy. Yet I am saying to you, love your enemies and pray for those who are persecuting you and be doing ideally to those who are hating you so that you may become sons of your father who is in the heavens. For he causes his son to rise on the wicked and the good and makes it rain on the just and the unjust. And if you are loving those loving you, what thanks is it to you? For sinners also are loving those loving them. And if you should be doing good to those doing good to you, what thanks is it to you? For sinners also are doing the same. Moreover, be loving your enemies and be doing good, and you will be sons of the Most High. For he is kind to the ungrateful and wicked. There's a lot in this passage, but for the purposes of this video, I just want us to focus on the truth that God loves those who do not love him. Likewise, God is at peace with those who are not at peace with him. One magnificent result and benefit of Jesus' death and resurrection is this. 2 Corinthians 5.19 from the Concordant Literal New Testament. God was in Christ, conciliating the world to himself, not reckoning their offenses to them. This is a done deal. He was in Christ, and through Christ's death, God conciliated the world to himself. And he is not reckoning the world's offenses to them. Most of us are familiar with the term reconciliation and what that means. That's where two parties come together and are mutually at peace. But this word conciliating, what does that mean? That's not a word that we see or hear every day in normal conversation. Conciliation, the noun, comes from the Greek katalage, and it means in an estrangement only one side is at peace with the other. It occurs four times in the Greek scriptures, Romans 5, 11, 11, 15, and 2 Corinthians 5, 18, and 19. Conciliate, the verb is from the Greek katalasso, and it occurs six times in the Greek scriptures, twice in Romans 5.10, 1 Corinthians 7.11, and 2 Corinthians 5, 18, 19, and 20. On the other hand, reconcile, the verb comes from the Greek apokatalasso, and it means in an estrangement, both sides are at peace with each other. It occurs three times in the Greek scriptures, Ephesians 2.16 and Colossians 1, 20, and 22. Why did God have to do this? Send his son to the world so that he could conciliate the world to himself. Why did Jesus have to die and be raised from the dead? Let's go back, way back, to the Garden of Eden. God and Adam enjoyed a peaceful relationship in the garden. Then, Adam did one thing that caused him to become God's enemy. He sinned. He missed the mark. God said to Adam, don't eat from that tree. That one? No, that one. Got it. Adam ate from that tree. 
This one sin caused distance between God and Adam. It caused Adam to try to hide from God. And it caused God to drive Adam and Eve out of the garden. Adam's one act of disobedience affected all of humanity, which was, at that time, only him and Eve. But the situation was not remedied, so the distance remained between God and all humanity, even as humanity grew to millions upon millions of people. Adam's one act of disobedience brought death to all mankind. Romans 5.12 tells us, Therefore, even as through one man sin entered into the world, and through sin death, thus death passed through into all mankind, on which all sin. We die ultimately because of Adam's one sin. All were condemned because of Adam's one act. Romans 5.18 Consequently then, as it was through one offense, for all mankind for condemnation. Adam's one act of disobedience made all his descendants sinners. Romans 5.19 For even as, through the disobedience of the one man, the many were constituted sinners. All of this mess that we're in traces back to Adam's one disobedience. And humanity under Adam and his sin is called in scripture our old humanity. Romans 6.6 6. We were all brought without our permission into this enmity, this enemy status with God. None of us asked for this. We were conceived into it by the will of God and our parents getting jiggy with it. At the moment of our conception, we all became subject to the consequences of Adam's one disobedience. We are God's enemies, and death, sin, and condemnation are with us every day. Billions have died in the womb before they even do anything good or bad. None of us had to accept Adam as our personal condemner to become an enemy of God and subject to death. None of us had to place our faith in Adam to be made sinners. All people are subject to these consequences, even atheists and people who don't even believe Adam ever existed. God included all of humanity in Adam. It was a bad situation. This bad situation shows us the tremendous power of one act. My God! How powerful was that one act of Adam? Billions upon billions of people suffer and die because of his one act. Why is he smiling that stupid bloody smile? Didn't he just say billions suffer and die because of Adam's sin? Idiot! Because on the good side, the one act of Jesus in his obedience unto death is even more powerful than the one bad act committed by Adam. Do you really believe this? A lot of people have told me that Jesus is greater than Adam, but when push comes to shove, they believe that Adam's one act has more power than Jesus' one act. Enter Jesus into this evil situation to provide the full remedy. 2 Corinthians 5 21, for the one not knowing sin, he makes sin for our sakes. Romans 5, 6, 8, and 10a. For Christ, while we are still infirm, still in accord with the era, for the sake of the irreverent, died. Yet God is commending this love of his to us, seeing that while we are still sinners, Christ died for our sakes. For if being enemies, we were conciliated to God through the death of his Son, notice with all of your noticing powers that we, while weak, while irreverent, while sinners, while enemies, were conciliated to God through the death of his son. When Jesus died, he took all of humanity, the old humanity, and all of the barriers between God and man down to the grave, down into death with him. 2 Corinthians 5.14 For the love of Christ is constraining us, judging this, that if one died for the sake of all, consequently all died. Romans 6.6 6, Knowing this, that our old humanity was crucified together with him, that the body of sin may be nullified. Romans 8.3 Sending his own son in the likeness of sin's flesh, and concerning sin, he condemns sin in the flesh. John 1.29 John the Baptist is saying, Lo, the Lamb of God, which is taking away the sin of the world. <laughs> I... I have to be honest, I'm getting a little teary just reading this, what he did for us.
Jesus became sin for our benefit. When he died, he didn't go into death alone. We went with him. Just as God included all of us in Adam, he also included all of us in Christ. The old humanity, the condemned one that descended from Adam, was taken to the grave, down into death, along with all of its sin, and the sin was condemned. We all died. When Christ was raised, the new humanity was raised with him, uncondemned, justified, and sinless, immortal. How can this be? Romans 6, 7. For one who dies has been justified from sin. We were resurrected with Christ as the new humanity, which is included in Christ. Now God knows humanity not through disobedient Adam, our old humanity, but through its new head, Jesus, the Son of God, the last Adam, the new humanity. And we know how much God loves his Son. This is also his great love for you and me and all humanity. His death and resurrection benefits the same all that were condemned in Adam. Sin, the barrier that prevented peace between God and mankind, has been removed. God knows this, so he is at peace with the world, even with those who are not at peace with him. Few in mankind know what Jesus really did in his death and resurrection, so very few actually believe it and are at peace with God and experiencing full reconciliation. Do you know this, what Jesus actually did for you, for your benefit? Do you believe this, what he did for you, for your benefit? Jesus' blood provides not only for God's conciliation to the world, but the eventual full reconciliation of all, Colossians 1.20, and through him to reconcile all to him, making peace through the blood of his cross, through him, whether those on the earth or those in the heavens. And guess what? None of us asked for this either. Did anyone here ask Jesus to leave heaven, come to earth, and die for the benefit of all? No way! Did anyone here ask God to raise Jesus out of death for the benefit of us all? No way! But all these things were done by God and Christ without our permission for our benefit. It's a pure gift from God and Christ. It's like our situation with Adam. None of us have to accept Jesus as our personal Savior to be saved by him. 1 Timothy 4.10 We rely on the living God who is the Savior of all mankind, especially of believers. God is currently the Savior of all mankind because he has saved all mankind through his Son. The especially of believers are those who believe now in this life, and they will begin to experience the benefits of of being saved when they believe. The rest will come to believe later, and then they too will experience the benefits of their salvation that was already accomplished by God and Christ. None of us have to place our faith in him to be justified by his one act. Romans 5.18 Consequently then, as it was through one offense for all mankind for condemnation, thus also it is through one just award for all mankind for life's justifying. We were all condemned in Adam, we are all justified through Christ. 1 Corinthians 15.22 For even as in Adam all are dying, thus also in Christ shall all be vivified. Death came through Adam, vivification comes through Christ for all. The same all that are dying in Adam will also be vivified in Christ. Vivified means to be made immortal beyond the reach of death. Just as at the moment of conception God brought us into the experience of the consequences of Adam's disobedience, our belief that God gives to us, brings us into the experience of the benefits of Jesus' one act of obedience. You didn't choose to be conceived, and you don't choose to believe. God caused you to be conceived and brought you into this world, and God is the one who gives you belief. It's all God's plan, it's all God's choice, and it's all God's doing. Just as God included us all in Adam and all of the consequences of his disobedience, he includes us in Christ and we are blessed with all the benefits from his obedience. We're all just along for the ride on the almighty God's roller coaster extravaganza of experience. Those who tell you that God and Christ's work will not benefit all are simply lying to you and you don't have to believe them. Believe the scriptures. But what about... The thing is, we can see all around us the effectiveness, the scale, and the power of Adam's one act of disobedience. Sin, death, decay, and destruction, 
It's everywhere. But regarding the benefits of Jesus' one act, we can only see the full results of that by faith. In God's time, we will see the full manifestation of all the benefits of what Christ accomplished through his death and resurrection. Salvation, justification, immortality, and full reconciliation. The man, Christ Jesus, is currently mediating peace between God and humanity. He is the reconciler, working to bring the parties together, and he will succeed in this task completely. 1 Timothy 2.5 For there is one God and one mediator of God and mankind, a man, Christ Jesus. As mediator, he will fulfill his mission to fully reconcile God and all of mankind. The call from our reconciler to humanity is this. Be conciliated to God. Believe the good news. Christ died for your sins. He was entombed. He was roused the third day. Here again is where all humanity currently is with God based on the work of Christ. 2 Corinthians 5.19 God was in Christ conciliating the world to himself, not reckoning their offenses to them. This is completed. God is conciliated to the world, and he is not reckoning your offenses to you, no matter who you are or what you've done. This is why the Apostle Paul, after Jesus' death and resurrection, could say these words to a very religious group of unbelievers. Yes, there are religious unbelievers. Though to be sure, not far from each one of us is he inherent. Even though God is near, most of the world is still in enemy mode towards God. Those who don't know about or believe the great truth of what Christ accomplished in his death and resurrection will not come to God. They will not believe this truth. They will hide from him. They will fear him. They will believe that God is still mad at them. They will believe that God is still in enemy mode just like them. Thus, they will respond in kind and be enemies toward God, considering him an enemy to be feared and avoided. Believe this powerful truth of God's conciliation to you, and you be conciliated to God. When one has peace toward God, then full reconciliation is the result. Mutual peace and harmony between God and God. And mankind. My desire is for you individually to experience full reconciliation with God. Some obtain conciliation with God in this life and are fully reconciled to Him and benefit from this reconciliation now. And they will have Aeonian life in the future, which is immortal life for the oncoming eons. Obviously, this is a great benefit. In Romans 5, 9 through 11, Paul is speaking to those who have obtained full reconciliation. Much rather than being now justified in his blood, we shall be saved from indignation through him. For if being enemies, we were conciliated to God through the death of his son, much rather being conciliated, we shall be saved in his life. Yet not only so, but we are glorying also in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we now obtain the conciliation. Paul reminds them in verse 10 that being enemies, they were conciliated to God through the death of his son. But because these people have obtained conciliation and peace with God, they now have full reconciliation. And one of the benefits of this is in verse 9. At the end, it says, We shall be saved from indignation through him. There is a coming indignation from God upon the world, but those who believe and are conciliated to God in this life will not face that indignation from God. Believing and being fully reconciled to God now in this life does have great benefits. In Colossians 1, 21 through 22, And you, being once estranged and enemies in comprehension by wicked acts, yet now he reconciles by his body of flesh through his death to present you holy and flawless and unimpeachable in his sight. Christ is the reconciler, here as we see at the end of verse 21. Yet now he reconciles his enemies. So God and Christ are producing both sides of the reconciliation. Christ in his death, and also Christ by bringing the unbeliever into belief and conciliation with God, thus bringing full reconciliation. The rest of humanity who do not obtain conciliation and full reconciliation in this life 
will obtain it in the future. And when they obtain it, the peace and the conciliation and full reconciliation that Jesus secured at his death and resurrection will be there for them to enjoy. Realize that God is at peace with you and is not reckoning your sins and offenses to you. Your sin is gone. It died and was buried with Christ. When you realize this and accept the truth, then you'll have peace with God. And this truth will set you free and cause joy as you realize how God and Christ now see you, not as an enemy, but someone whom they love dearly. So why are most not fully reconciled to God and they are rejecting his peace? Jesus said in John 3, 19 through 20, Now this is the judging that the light has come into the world, and men love the darkness rather than the light, for their acts are wicked. For everyone who is committing bad things is hating the light, and is not coming to the light, lest his acts may be exposed. Because humanity as a whole loves its acts of wickedness, it stays in the darkness, for fear that if it comes into the light, it may be exposed. This is obviously a confusion and misunderstanding of who God is. He sees acts whether they're done in the light or in the darkness and all acts done in the darkness will eventually be exposed. These people make a mistake similar to what Adam did in the garden by trying to hide from God after he sinned, not realizing that you cannot hide from God. We should not hide from God because he loves us. We've all sinned, we've all fallen short of his ideal, so there's no reason to stay in the darkness. He knows the wickedness of all mankind and still is at peace with all mankind. Be conciliated to God, come out of the darkness. We've all been deceived by the adversary, Satan, and we believe his lies about God that keep us from God. Many people are told and believe that God will torment people forever if they don't believe in him, or he will annihilate them and they will be dead forever. And rightfully, most people don't want anything to do with this kind of God because it is a false God. So in their avoidance of the false God, they also avoid pretty much any God, including the true God, and they miss out on the great benefits from knowing the true, only, living God. We see the blinding work of Satan in 2 Corinthians 4, 3-4. The Apostle Paul writes, Now, if our evangel, or good message, is covered, also it is covered in those who are perishing, in whom the God of this eon, who is Satan, blinds the apprehensions of the unbelieving so that the illumination of the evangel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of the invisible God, does not irradiate them. Satan is currently blinding much of the world to the good message of God and Christ in their work done on behalf of not only humanity, but all of creation. This blindness will not endure forever as we understand God's will in 1 Timothy 2.4 that all be saved and come into a realization of the truth. Satan's current work of blinding people to the truth of God will come to an end and all will come to realize the truth. May God grant you belief in the truth so that you come to have peace and full reconciliation with him and Christ. Many have not yet been conciliated to God because he has not yet granted them belief. Philippians 1.29 For to you it is graciously granted for Christ's sake not only to be believing on him but to be suffering for his sake also. As I said before, we do not choose to be conceived and we do not choose to believe. Both are accomplished in our lives by God and Him alone. Even if you do not currently have peace toward God, you cannot undo His peace toward you. The only way you could do that is to undo the death and resurrection of Jesus, and that ain't gonna happen. Whenever Christ the Mediator brings you into full reconciliation with God, His peace will already be there for you. Why wait? Be conciliated to God. Believe that God is at peace with you and respond in kind. God and Christ love you and they have proven their love by their beneficial actions for you. The death and resurrection and the mediation of Christ to bring you to peace with God. I hope this video has helped you, and if it has benefited you, please hit the like button so that this message can hopefully get spread to a larger audience and more and more people will come to understand how God really sees them and that he loves them and he does not consider them to be an enemy. I invite you to watch this video next.